Joining us now is special guest, uh, cornerback of the Green Bay Packers, Chandon Sullivan. Chandon, thanks so much for joining us, and how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about y'all? I'm doing real good. And, you know, it's been quite an interesting few months here. So um, I don't know if you can uh, just uh, kind of bring us up to speed on what you've been up to, how you've been coping with everything that's been going on, and, and how you've been uh, really able to stay focused for the upcoming season. Uh, it's definitely been some weird times. You know, 2020 has just been full of surprises. But at the end of the day, you know, I have a job and I just been, you know, trying to stay in shape and just stay ready. You know, virtual OTAs was a little different, but it, it allowed us to slow down, you know, really dive into the playbook. And uh, at this point, we're just putting on finishing touches when I'm ready for the season. Listen, uh, so last year we talked, it was before the season, training camp was right around the corner. Um, man, a lot has happened <laughs> between the last time we talked and now. Um, I, you know, we'll get into it, but, um, you know, I, I look at it last year, you're looking to make the team contribute where you could, you go ahead, make the team stellar, stellar play all year. So now going into your second season in green Bay, third year in the NFL, um, what are you looking to do this season, man? Because I mean, we we talk about you on the pod, the sky's the limit. We think with, uh, your talent and then how you're playing this game. Uh, I'm just ready to contribute at any position, you know, they throw me in. Uh, I feel real confident going into year two on the defensive scheme, anywhere they put me. So I'm just excited and hopefully, you know, I can be like a household name. So. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, you've got a new, uh, position coach, uh, with, uh, G coach Jerry Gray. Um, yep. what, what conversations or interactions have you had with him so far? What is your first impressions on, on how he, uh, wants to continue to work with you and, and how he would like to use you? Uh, he's an old school style coach. You know, he's real cool. And at the end of the day, he just wants players to be players. You know, he, he told us from day one, whatever you're good at, you know, I'm allowed to do that. And, you know, where I can help you. Because his goal, he wants us to be, you know, pro bowlers and all pro players. So, you know, since day one, he's been nothing but open-minded. And, you know, I'm just excited to get to work with him. For sure. And I mean, going back to last year, um, you know, your role just grew and grew. And you could see that in the play and the opportunities that you had, you just maximized those opportunities. Trust continued to develop, I'm sure, with the coaching staff um, and, and with Coach, he Coach Patton at the coordinator level. Um, so you have to, to really be excited, as Dane said, about coming into this season, uh, your versatility, that was kind of your blueprint that you told us last year, how you plan to, to make the roster. So, you know, what, what do you think is, is some of your goals? Just drilling down on this. Um, Tremont Williams, you know, obviously uh, Tremont has had an awesome career. We're not sure if he's going to continue. Right now he's a free agent, uh, but he had a, a big role in the defense last year. But you guys, yourself and some of the other guys in that cornerback group, uh, have some experience and a ton of talent, too. So how might you be able to seize um, some additional opportunities uh, if, uh, if the Packers don't bring Tremont back this season and just looking at to grow off of what you did last year? Just continue to learn the playbook inside and out. You know, the moment where the coach has been hesitant to put me in, then I know, that means I failed at something. So. My, my goal is just to make them trust me. It doesn't matter if they put me in safety, dom, nickel. And I have to just continue to prove it in practice. You know, I have to earn the respect. And, uh, you know, as an undrafted guy, I always have a chip on my shoulder. So I'm hungry and I'm just ready to compete and, and win. So. That definitely shows. Uh, man, do you like blitzing the quarterback? <laughs> I was watching. I was at the games last year. I'm watching you. You're going off the corner. You're going all over the place. Do you like hitting the quarterback? You got in Trubisky's face a couple times in that Bears game. I mean, what's it feel like when you see the the white in their eyes as you're getting closed and in on them? Man, I, I got close, but I didn't quite get home. But, you know, it's exciting because, you know, in practice you can't touch the quarterback ever. So you get in the game and get a free shot, you know, just know I'm coming. So. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, um, no offense, but if uh, we don't want you to touch Aaron at all, um, and I don't think anybody does. Um, but in, in any event, yeah, that's – and I, I think just kind of thinking about some of the other ways that you were able to impact uh, on the field. I mean, um, your 
um, pro football focus uh, uh, passer rating uh, against the uh, guys you lined up against, uh, led the league, I believe, um, which is just incredible. So, you know, what were some of the, you know, little things that you think you were doing from a, a fundamental standpoint that the average fan may not be able to see uh, that allowed you to play at that high of a level? Well, I think it just came to not trying to do too much, you know, just trusting in my abilities. I felt like that's where I kind of got away from myself my rookie year, trying to make the play, trying to force it instead of allowing the game to come to me. And on top of that, just knowing tendencies of other players, uh, studying the playbook and just, you know, the game slowed down for me a lot this year. And I was able to move around a lot, play in the slot, whether it was to the boundary or to the field. And, uh, you know, I guarded tight ends, I guarded receivers. So I just had like a good, you know, mixture of, of competition all year. And I felt like I handled it well. Yeah. Um yeah. On a lighter note, I'm just kind of curious, just looking at um, how all of the OTAs have been remote so far. You know, ha have you been able to have pretty good communication with some of your teammates or have some, you know, um, culture building opportunities, uh, uh, even in that remote environment? Of course, you know, even outside of football, you know, our DB core, we're all young guys. And uh, so we pretty much talk regularly anyway. But the way OTAs were designed this year with the DBs allowing to meet, through Zoom every day, you know, it, just, it made us even closer. So, you know, and now OTAs was slowed down, it was at a slower pace, so everybody can learn what everybody's doing. It doesn't matter if you're a corner or a safety, you know, you pretty much know it, you know, everybody's doing on any snap, so it was pretty cool. You said you're talking to these guys outside of football. What are you talking about? Are you, you sharing music? I mean, you know, movies? I know you're a TV guy from the last time we talked. What's, what's kind of the conversation? Uh, it's all the above, family, uh, music, uh, talking a little trash, uh, talking about, you know, I'm stronger than you, I've been, been lifting this up, talking about I'm faster than you, you know, we're going to set up a race when we get back, you know, just a little friendly stuff, and we had like a little group message where we check in and send our workouts for the day, just try to build that competitive edge, because, you know, it's tough when you're away from your teammates for that long, so we're just trying to find ways, you know, to stay in touch. Yeah, sure, for Tom. sure. Speak, <laughs> speaking of that workout, man, I saw you with the Packer hat on. You're looking ripped. I mean, what what's the workouts looking like these days? Because I was like, holy crap! I was going through Instagram, and you look like you're uh, you're ready for game shape right now. Oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely in camp shape. I just try to change my diet. Uh, getting a little older, trying to cut out you know as much bad food as I can, and just staying you know consistent with my regimens. Make sure I'm running, make sure I'm lifting, and make sure I don't peak too early. You know, you don't want to peak before you reach camp. So. Just steady, you know, increasing each week. Yeah, and you said you kind of talking about workouts and talking trash and stuff. Um, I know that you uh, trained with some other guys before last season. I'm assuming that that's not possible right now. Uh, but are you guys uh, sharing workout videos and, you know, kind of the, the stats and, and what you're getting done uh, to kind of motivate each other and, and, and keep each other going? Of course, it's kind of like a way we check in daily, just sitting to work out, whether, whether it's even if you just ran a mile, something simple, just a way to check in and, you know, just build that competitive fire. Because like I said, this is probably the longest break I've ever had since I was a kid. Like, I've always been busy. So it's been, you know, tough. And sometimes it does get kind of repetitive. But, you know, talking to your teammates, it, it keeps you focused in that line. Go, going back to the field, something I noticed uh, from your game last season is big third down plays. Uh, mm -hmm. Big third down plays, you're breaking up passes. You, you seem to be around the ball. I, I think of a Travis Kelsey play against the Chiefs late in the game. Uh, there was a, a Detroit game uh, in there. I was at a, the Washington game where you had a nice play in the first quarter, I believe it was. Um, and, you know, I, do you, from a mindset perspective, I mean, I know your head's in it all game long. Uh, do you – you know, do you ratchet it up a little bit more on third down? Are you looking at tendencies from from the team from tape on third down? I mean, it's just – it was very noticeable to us, Wags and I, watching you play. It's like third down, showtime is around the ball. He's knocking the ball away, doing whatever, you know, what you're doing. So is that different? Is it just happenstance? Or, or I just – I imagine it's something you're really working on. It's a combination of things. You know, it's a combination of our coaches – you know, giving us a good plan, game plan. So we kind of have an idea what the team's going to do. Uh, and we emphasize the ball. You know, that's how you win the game. You know, the more turnovers you create, you know, you get the ball to air, you know, the better chance we have of winning. So these are plays we make in practice and we emphasize, especially with third and fourth down. That's that's the money there. So, you know, you, you got to step up. You got to make the play. And, you know, that, the weird thing about playing DB is you never know when your chance is going to come. So you just got to constantly stay ready and stay consistent. So I think, you know, that's what it came down to.
Yeah, and I just kind of to build on the uh, uh, meetings through OTAs and Zoom, what is kind of the feeling uh, amongst the team right now? I mean, um, if you had to kind of just give us a, a feeling of, of how everybody's doing at this point, uh, maybe compared to, to last season, um, you know, are, are guys ready to go or, or what's, what's, what's sort of the general feeling uh, with the rest of the team? I feel like since we had to do OTAs virtually, I feel like guys are hungry. They're more hungry. They're ready to get back because they took away a phase of football from us already. So it's like we're just so ready to stop working out and finally put the pads on that, you know, guys are just hungry. And it's going to be probably scary for a lot of teams just because, I, you know, just talking to our, especially the defensive side of the ball, you know, I haven't seen a team like this so hungry to get on the field in a while. So I'm excited. Is there some things that, you know, you – you might have to do or the coaches might have told you to prepare for that you guys might be going so all out with that pent up energy that there'd be concern about injuries or anything of that nature. But I'm just curious if you have to prepare a different way as you go into camp. Uh, I think the biggest thing now is so much downtime. You just have to make sure you're in shape. You know, the moment you start having soft tissue injuries and, and little nagging things like that, you know, that can, you know, set you back and set the team back. So the biggest thing is just make sure you come back in football shape, you know, so that's probably the biggest thing. Last season, you had probably my, one of my favorite moments of the season was uh, that pick in Dallas, uh, you know, athletic play, you take the ball away from Dak and, uh, you know, love seeing the Packers beat the Cowboys. Uh, and then you get down there, you're waving all the guys down, you get into the end zone. You drop down. You do the uh, the Nick Collins. Um, do you did you know Nick prior to that? Nick Collins, one of the great DBs in Packer history, and just we were going nuts when we saw that. So uh, you know, what was the purpose behind that? Because uh, did you have that planned if you were going to have an interception? Was it spur of the moment? Uh, well, actually, you know, I told Tremont early in the week. You know, if I make a play or when I make a play. We got to do a celebration. So we had a celebration plan, but just in the heat of the moment, it just kind of went out the window. And like I guess, like subconsciously, you know, I was just like, "I'm, I'm finna do this." And it was just kind of cool. Cause after you know, Nick hit me up, and uh, you know, everybody made it such a big thing. At the time, I didn't really realize it was you know such a big deal, but you know, it was kind of cool. Yeah, and I, I know I mentioned Tremont earlier, but I'm just curious. Can can you share a little bit about what he meant? to all of you guys uh, last season if, if he indeed does not come back to the Packers? It's going to be tough. You know, even to this day, I still talk to Tremont, you know, just because I see him as like a big brother, a mentor. You know, he talked about a guy who lasted in this league a long time and came in undrafted, just like myself, played the same position. So, you know, being able to watch him the whole season, see how he prepares physically, mentally, emotionally for the season, it helped me out a lot. And I, I honestly feel like that, that's the one player I've learned the most from since I've been in the league. So, you know, if he's gone, it's definitely going to be, you know, a big hit to the team. But at the end of the day, we're still going to have a job to, you know, figure out and do. So we just got to see what happens. Uh, any guys you lined up against last season that were particularly tough? You look at them all the same. Uh, were there any guys where after the game you were like, oh, shoot, that guy, <laughs> that guy's got a little something extra? That's a lot of guys, you know, like I said, I moved around so much. So I was guarding, you know, running backs in some formations. I was guarding tight ends. So you talk about the, the Kittles of the world, the Kelseys. And then you, you talk about putting me in a slot. I'm going against, you know, Randall Cobb. And, and there's no telling who I'll be guarding each week. So each week I prepare for whatever. So, you know, those. Yeah, for sure. Were, and were any of those guys in the moment you lined up where you're just like, oh, this is real. <laughs> yeah, a few moments, you know, when I seen Kittle for the first time, you know, you can see the scout report and you see it on paper. But then when you actually line up and see how big these guys are, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, always, always. Yeah. Fun. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good. So last season, um, you know, I wondering if you had a personal highlight for you. You know, mm -hmm. you are a guy who. Uh, undrafted you've worked for everything you've gotten that's one of the things that we really admire about you but from a personal perspective and then I'm going to ask you I guess from a team perspective too these could be maybe be different answers but uh what was kind of the highlight for you as a player and also maybe from from a team perspective that that you can recall because last season was incredibly special yeah uh probably 
making the team first off. You know, you're talking about an undrafted guy to make the team and have the preseason I did and get an opportunity. You know, that was that was definitely a blessing. And then after that, probably winning the NFC North championship. You know, that's going six and zero. You know, that's 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 tough to do, but we was able to accomplish that. And and just knowing we was one game away from the Super Bowl is an amazing feeling. So. Yeah, uh, Chandon, I, I don't normally dress up for our guests, but since I was talking to an NFC North champion today, I figured I'd wear the shirt. So we appreciate that, that W. <laughs> so, and, you know, and just building on that team, um, have you guys talked about what you think? Um, I, I know you don't want to rehash just the NFC championship game because, you know, that, that was accumulation of the incredible season you have. But have you talked a little bit just in terms of the whole journey uh, as a team for what you think it might take to get over the top and make that run into the Super Bowl this season? Well, you know, you see it from both sides. You know, we're excited that we, you know, we're close to the Super Bowl, but that's not good enough. So we just have to figure out a way to get over that hump, you know, just – use our mistakes from last season and try not to duplicate them. And then, you know, this time go around, we play games in California. We got to execute. We got to find a way to win. And so, you know, we'll just see. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, you know, if you guys are in that position again, I'm sure that you're going to be more than ready. Sometimes those one-game scenarios, it's not as much about the team that you're playing as things can just kind of – you know, sometimes the game just doesn't go your way. So, um, so, yeah, go ahead. And you, just, you never forget that feeling. You know, it sucks when you're walking off the field and knowing that you're just as good as the team or, or should have beat or are capable of beating the team. So, I know personally I'll never forget that feeling because, you know, this game of football is a short span of time, so you never know how many times you'll get close to the Super Bowl. So, you just got to, you know, take advantage of those moments you do have. Yeah, and listen, I, you've been super generous with your time, I, I, but I got to ask you one more. I'm just wondering, this season's coming up. Um, what can we and what are fans going to expect to see from you this year? I mean, we think that you're, you're going to be playing an awful lot of snaps. I mean, are, is your mentality really just you're coming in and you're just going to continue to earn those snaps, soak up those opportunities? Yeah, my mindset is, you know, come in, earn respect from my teammates and then the rest of the league. And uh, try not to do too much. A lot of plays have come to myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, just know you're going to get a more complete player this year. I'm going into year three. I had a full system, uh, for a full year under the system. And uh, I honestly feel, you know, very confident and, and just excited to see what I'm going to do myself. So, you know. So, Shannon, I'm going to pivot a little bit. And this will be the last thing we do. Um, last year, you mentioned that you had an interest in sports journalism, that you kind of you, – you love Stephen A., so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, I'm going to see, do you have a hot take? And, and let's talk, you said uh, basketball is your first love. So I won't put it on football. Um, what, what kind of hot take can you give us about the upcoming NBA playoffs? It's going to be interesting. Honestly, I don't, I'm hoping it's going to be a season. It's just I don't know what's going on. You know, they're talking about bringing all the players to the bubble, but then you have some guys dropping out. I just hope my guy LeBron gets a chance, you know, to get another <laughs> all up. But uh <laughs> That's awesome. So LeBron, why does he have an advantage in this playoffs and in this bubble environment? Well, one, he's still LeBron, you know. In my opinion, he's still the best player in the league. Uh he's had a lot of time to rest, which is, you know, probably valuable to him at at his age. And uh, you know, they add a few pieces here and there. They just got J.R. Smith, so we'll just we'll just see how it goes. Yep, and J.R. Smith's my boy back uh, uh, NBA 2K. He always carried me to victory. So, um, yep. yep, we're loving to see it. So, absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, well, listen, I mean, we don't want to take up too much of your time. It just uh, – we really appreciate you um, coming on again with us. Uh, it's always uh, great to catch up with you. Uh, you're just, uh, you know, been somebody that we really are enjoying following. Don't have any bigger fans than Lombardi's Legends podcast, man. So just keep exactly. grinding. We've got your back. And uh, congrats on the, the contract. We're hoping that you get a big, long one after this season as well to stay in Green Bay for a long time. Yes, sir. Thank you. I would love that so much. So Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, Shandon. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go. All right. Counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. There ain't no second place in Lambo, it's a home.